Hey guys, Andy here from Mediocre Hobbies coming at you with what I thought was going to be the last video in the World Eaters playlist, the Exalted 8 Bound. So I have done a bunch of videos already. We have Karn, Angron, Jackals, World Eaters, Exalted 8 Bound, even the Butcher is over on my Patreon. So every single thing that has come out for World Eaters is now a video on my channel. But I have had some requests to uh, get a vehicle done and see how I would do a vehicle in this scheme. So I'm gonna be bringing that to you guys later in the week and I'm gonna paint up a World Eaters Rhino for you. But for today, like I said, we're gonna stick around with the Exalted 8-Bound, which are very cool, kind of, I almost like possessed for World Eaters. They're very powerful. I actually used them in a game the other day and they were shockingly powerful on the table. So I'm excited to show you guys how to get these painted up. Before I get into the video, I just want a huge thank you to all of my active patrons. Without you guys, I would not be able to keep the lights on and the cameras rolling. If you're interested in becoming a member of my Patreon, there's links to that below. Benefits that you do get are a private Discord server where you can chat with me and 140, 150 other people about your hobby on a daily basis. And you also get an extra video a week. So one custom video per week is just for my patrons. So that means 52 extra videos a year. There has never been a better time to get involved. So without further ado, let's get into the video. This is the Exalted 8 Bound that I decided to paint up for this video. As you can see, they're quite nicely posed miniatures. I gave the model a coat of Chaos Black and then a grey sear um, spray of the rattle can just to give it a really nice coat for the contrast. I then started with Fire Slayer Flesh and I applied that all over the skin of the miniature. And you gotta pay attention to these models because they can have skin in kind of bizarre places. So for instance, on this miniature, you've got both his arms, as per normal, his head, there's a little bit of his chest poking out from underneath his chin and the armor, his midriff, and a lot of his backpack is actually skin. You'll see I make a mistake later in the video when I'm doing the layering of it that I forget to layer the backpack because my brain just doesn't normally associate looking at that part of the miniature for the skin. It's a funny thing. After that, we moved over to uh, flesh tears red and base coated all of the armor in. There is a lot of gold trim on this, but red is a fantastic base coat um, for gold. So it is okay, just cover the entire armor in red like this. And after that, we can move over to Black Templar and just get all the other kind of random details. So any metallics that are gonna be silver, you can do with black as well. It's a nicer base coat than white. The handle of his chain ax, all the pipe work that's coming out of his skin and out of his armor. All the horns in these models are actually black as well. That's what they were on the Games Workshop website, which uh, suits me down to the ground because painting black horns is a lot easier and faster than painting them all with like layers of bone and stuff. And I think it looks kind of cool as well. So I will definitely go for that. After that, it's time to move over to Skeleton Horde for any of the bones. And by that, I mean the severed skulls that are uh, decorating his backpack. So we're gonna get a Skeleton Horde base coat on those. Three on his backpack and one hanging down from his loin cloth chain mail thing. After that, it's time to move over to Retributor Armor Gold and get a base coat on all of the trim. And these models have quite a lot of trim um, even more so than a, than a normal model. The connector points between one part of an armor and another seem to be like solid gold. So just take your time, find out all the different bits and pieces that need to be gold and very carefully highlight them. I'm sorry for the slightly blurry picture here. The camera decided that my fingers were maybe more interesting to focus on than the miniature. But what are you gonna do? With all the gold done, the model starts to come together. I really like seeing this stage. We're gonna get some lead belcher on all the other metallic parts of the model. So all of the chains hanging down, uh, a lot of the chain axe head, the blade, the, the teeth, I should say, the kind of motorized engine on the, the blade at the back of it. And then a few other bits and pieces in the model you will notice are also uh, silver. So like I said, I will have the Games Workshop website open on these miniatures so I could basically spin the 360 around and have a look at all the different parts uh, to make sure that I didn't miss anything. Obviously this big circular saw built into his hand obviously goes silver as well. But that is the last part of the miniature that needs to be base coated before we move over to the wash. So after that, the model is all base coated. It didn't take that much time. 
maybe kind of 10, 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes to get it all base coated. So an hour to get all three of the squad base coated, I think it's pretty good. After that, we're going to go for null and oil to wash them all down. This will darken everything down quite substantially. And leave the armor in a really nice place to be layered up. In all previous videos for my world leaders, I did actually use Berserker Bloodshade for washing the miniature. I kind of forgot here and used the wrong shade, but it doesn't make too much of a difference when we move forward into the layering stage. I'm only now noticing as I'm doing the voiceover, so I do apologize for that. Um, Berserker Bloodshade can be used if you so choose, and it will make it blend in with the rest of the miniatures painting with my guides a little bit better maybe, but uh, that's up to you. Mephiston Red was used, or sorry, Corn Red was used as the first layer on the red armor after that shade had dried. Because this model is quite large, like 40 millimeter base, quite tall, getting in between all the different uh, gold trim parts with the red wasn't actually that difficult. It's an easy enough job to do, which is great because you got to do two stages. I've had a few comments on my videos that they would have left it at the corn red stage that the Mephiston jump brings it a little bit too bright. That's totally up to you if you want to do that. I do like my miniatures being a little bit brighter on the tabletop. I still don't think they're as bright as the Games Workshop ones on the box. Um, but like I said, if you like the corn look um, and you want to leave it that little bit darker, that kind of crimson color, absolutely go for it. Just leave it there. Skip the Mephiston red layer if you want to and just have your models look slightly darker. There is absolutely nothing wrong with that. Always feel free to tweak and change guides to suit your preference, your needs, and your tastes. With the red all layered up, it was time to move over to the skin. And for that, we're going to go to Cadian Flesh Tone. We're going to do an, a rough layer job on all the skin. Like I said, my tutorials are all about kind of being quick, getting armies on the table as soon as possible, not having backlogs built up. So other people might spend a long time layering up these skin parts like stage by stage, brighter and brighter until they're happy. All I'm going to do is throw Cadian Flesh Tone over it. And then I'm just going to wash it with Rikon Flesh Shade watered down. And then go back and do another tiny highlight with Rikon, uh, with Cadian Flesh Tone. That's it. Now that sounds like a lot of steps. But the, the layer job is actually quite quick because we're not trying to be neat and tidy. The shade will cover up any of our messiness. And then a really, really fine um, highlight on top of that. We'll fix everything. As you can see, the skin here looks a little bit rough. That's because it was the quick job to layer it up. Throw the Rikon Flesh Shade over the top. We'll darken the skin down again. I still have the idea in my head that these things, these guys are more gladiators than anything else. For some reason, gladiators in my head have a tanned skin. So uh, darkening the skin down just a little bit, um, I think works a treat. I was so excited about this step, I decided not to hold them on the miniature in frame. <laughs> Over to Lead Belcher now for one of the most important stages, and that is to highlight all of the silver and gold across the entire miniature. If you've been following along with the series or my channel for a long time, you know I do this quite a lot. We just like layer up all the metallic parts of a, of a miniature with the same silver paint. It helps all the metallics tie together. You do change technique though with the, the silver parts. It is just a normal highlight job, just higher parts. With the golds and stuff, you're just looking for like kind of like tap highlights, just putting little dots in like corners and sharp edges and stuff. And it really does make the gold pop off the model. After that, we're going to move over to Corvus Black and layer up all of the black parts of the miniature. So the housing of the chain axe, the, uh, the actual handle of the chain axe, the wraps, the uh, loincloth that runs down the front, all of the pipe work, claws, all those kind of bits and pieces that are on the miniature. Everything we basically did with the... Uh, black contrast at the beginning of the video. I'm going to get a very quick highlight on all of those. This is the bit I was talking about where you can see the skin is washed and highlighted, but I've just noticed the backpack is not. <laughs> and then we jump to the next scene where it suddenly is again. So yeah, that's me correcting my mistake. The shafty bone was used to layer up all of the bone parts on the miniature. So once again, all it is the three skulls. But World Eaters are notorious for taking trophies and having the miniatures covered in skulls. So this step is important. I do pay attention to the miniatures and try and find all of them. 
because there will be a few. With that finished, there's only one last step that I'm going to do for this guy, and that is Blood for the Blood God. These are gruesome killers, and they are going to spend more time than not covered in blood and gore. I'm not going to go too crazy. I'm not going to splatter any across his arms or in the body and stuff. I'm just going to apply some to the weapons, his instruments of death that he uses to uh, kill his enemy. And with that blood effect uh, applied, that is the finished result for my Exalted 8-Bound. I hope you guys like it, and I cannot wait to do the other two. And there we have it, guys. One Exalted 8-Bound painted up and ready for the tabletop. Cannot wait to get the other two members of this unit finished and get them off my backlog. Thank you guys for sticking around to the end of the video. If you enjoyed it, make sure you give it a like. If for some crazy reason you're not already subscribed to my channel, it would mean the world to me. If you took two seconds out of your day and hit subscribe, it literally costs you nothing and it helps me out immensely. If you have any questions, please drop in the comments below and I will get back to each and every one of you guys. I'll see you guys in the next video.